in the in this plane but before we try to understand that we have to understand another type of dislocation movement this dislocation movement is slipping okay this is called slipping glide of dislocation for both screw and edge dislocation the real dislocations are not pure edge or screw okay and you can find some pictures for visualization uh, in the book of Harlan Bacon which i'll share on google classroom okay and here also when you know this bow out this part of dislocation when you see this part what is happening at, at this part that's the dislocation line and that's the buzzer vector so that is edge what is happening here dislocation line and buzzer vector so that's a screw dislocation okay so it's a mixed dislocation it's neither pure edge dislocation nor pure screw dislocation and dislocations are geometrical concepts probably started from sir a h cottrell okay if you have heard of cottrell's atmosphere and all those things that was discovered by him but if you can also visualize them as a fluid laminar flow on a very viscous very very viscous solid if you look at the SEM images of dislocation, you will see that it appears that a very fine laminar flow of material is happening. And that is what is happening. The upper layer is moving on the lower part. Okay. And what is the resistance in a laminar flow? Friction. And in this case, you have shear modulus, the stiffness. Okay, so both of these are similar phenomena, but in this case you have to maintain certain more boundary conditions which you don't have to do if you uh, imagine this to be a fluid. So you have to have one on one correlation with each atom which you don't have to make when you have a fluid. Okay, so a lot of constraints appears because of that. The other type of movement which a dislocation can make is it's not easily possible just in the presence of stress if you only have stress it is not possible for the dislocation to show a different type of movement but it can show it when there are other things available what are those other things so i put an interstitial and you saw what happened what if i remove one atom from here so i have some atoms there and what if I remove this one and I also remove all those atoms then what happens dislocation line will just fall out yes yes so dislocation line was here and because I have removed all those atoms the dislocation has line has now moved one layer up that was not the slipping plane so this is not slipping there was no shear stress in that direction so why or and how can it happen when do you think this can happen in order to have this kind of movement what do i need to do what do i need to provide What, what should I remove? Is it not making any sense or what? What should I remove from here so that it goes up? What have I removed? A layer, a layer of atom. Removing an atom is equal to placing what? Vacancy. Voids are different, vacancies are different. Vacancy is an absence of an atom from its site. Void are spaces in the crystal. They are not at the atomic site. So octahedral, tetrahedral voids, they remain even if all the atoms are there. Okay? 
so i need to provide vacancies and when will i have more probability of having more vacancy in the system what changes so that more vacancy come in a material so you should ask yourself or the other question at what scenario you will have no vacancy in the system for a pure element for a pure element when will you not have any vacancy third law of thermodynamics for complete is mean solid and yeah when zero temperature yes yes okay so now reverse it when will you have more vacancy temperature yes when temperature increases okay so at every temperature you have equilibrium number of vacancies which system can have okay so as you increase temperatures more vacancy find themselves to fit in the system energetically okay and vacancies will have good amount of diffusivity so it will diffuse usually vacancies don't diffuse vacancies are absence of something so they can't diffuse in order to have diffusion so if you have read about diffusion if this atom has to diffuse how do you calculate what is the probability of diffusion for this atom so whatever is the kinetic energy it is making certain number of jumps in all the direction randomly goes okay so it is vibrating in all the direction so if you want to calculate the probability of diffusion in this direction then you need to divide it by 6 so 1 by 6 number of jumps this thing will be making in this direction out of randomness okay <clears throat> would it be sufficient for this atom to diffuse no you will have to have a probability of vacancy happening just at that point so whatever atomic so in this direction what is the probability of having a vacancy that multiplied by 1 by 6 of the jumps then you will have the diffusion possible in this direction okay so when vacancy come in the dislocation moves up and this type of movement is called is called glide glide slipping climb okay and not because of shear stress you can still pin this kind of dislocation because of interstitial some substitutional and if you provide vacancies so suppose these two points are pinned and then you provide vacancies here one in the same marker has to equal dekho so you provide vacancies here and then what will happen this dislocation will climb this is similar to what happened in frank red source so the same thing will be happening in this and it will also generate more dislocation and that is called burden herring source because burden and herring discovered it okay <clears throat> so now <clears throat> let us look at one so So let us look at one screw dislocation. Okay, and the displacement in screw dislocation is in which direction? So if this is x and that is y, and then this is z, then in which direction it has a displacement? Z only, right? So I only have u z. and that will be equal to if the burger vector is b so this is b a 
okay and then suppose from the beginning it has made an angle of theta so then i can write it as b theta by 2 pi r isko khol diya to 2 pi r ho gaya hai na so this is the displacement now what and all strain components i will have will i have epsilon xx what is epsilon xx epsilon xx is half del u by del x plus o u1 sorry u2 and then u1 by del y right that is strain right so what will be the value of epsilon xx is there u1 ux is not there zero u y is also not there so epsilon x is not there okay so what components of strain will i have i will not have epsilon x i will not have epsilon y y will i have epsilon z yeah how what will be epsilon dz half, half of del u del u by del u by uh, del del x del z del u by del z del z plus no plus it's a normal stress okay so what is the variation of this in z direction it's not a function it's not a function of z r is equal to root over x square plus y square there is no z there so that is also zero what will i have i might have these and this is what i was telling you a little before that screw dislocation will ha not have normal stresses Okay. So now, can you calculate the values of these two things? Just do it now. Just take your pen and paper and try to calculate. So, theta you can probably change. So theta is equal to tan inverse of y by x. Okay. So then, just calculate either of these. half of you should calculate epsilon yz and another one epsilon xz this will be half of u y del x sorry del z plus del u z by del y so this part will not come so you will only have this one so 1 by 2 and then what have i written so i will have this one not this one this is not there because u y is zero so you only have del u z by del y okay so you have to find out derivative of u z with respect to y and what is that so u z is b tan inverse y by x divided by 2 pi root over x square plus y square to a
these are two layers differentiation where you have to assume y by x is equal to t and then do something something okay so you can try that for the sake of class time i am not giving more time and we will come in the Okay, so this is what we have discussed so far for the two dislocations, and I there are many things, and let us see how much we can cover. So this is an example of a screw dislocation in a nano wire. Okay, so you can see the step formation, and this is a real image where you can see this thing rotating like this schematic okay now if you also imagine an edge dislocation in this kind of formulation and you try to find out so the story doesn't stop just by calculation of strain from strain you also have to calculate stress and these are elastic things okay so you should know for doing this you should know the relationship to find out sigma ij from epsilon ij these relations you have to find out okay so you will have 2g and epsilon ij plus lamy's constant into something so that relation you have to use and then you have to calculate the value this you should do you must do in tutorials okay good <clears throat> so if you calculate the stresses for edge dislocation then what do you see what are the differences we have shear stress we also have normal stress okay and the calculation is little complicated so there is no need of deriving that or doing the calculation if you want to do it you can do it okay <clears throat> the lower two equations are the elastic energy on an edge dislocation and energy usually is proportional to the square of the burgess vector okay so usually energy on a dislocation is alpha g v square where alpha is some constant g is shear modulus v is burgess vector and we are not talking about the any kind of vectorial multiplication this is just the magnitude because energy is a scalar okay <clears throat> but apart from alpha gb square you also see this term okay and r not is the radius where dislocation line is and then there is some disturbance here okay so there is a finite radius if you put r is equal to 0 what will happen to this equation it will not be defined and that area where things are not defined are called core of dislocation where it is supposed to have very high energy okay so these are like grain boundary areas where you have very high energy and a lot of substitutional atoms also interstitials atoms can move through it okay can move through this distorted high energy area light atoms also can diffuse very fastly from the grain boundary why do atoms diffuse through grain boundaries very easily we just discussed about diffusion no? a little bit so why do you think they can move very easily from the grain boundary there should be a probability that the nearest atom should be better yes for that reason they may jump so what is so special about grain boundary do they have a lot of probability of having a vacancy yes because there are no sites there are no sites where you have to find a probability of having an atom missing you don't need a vacancy what is a vacancy the atomic site has to be absent in grain boundary there is no atomic site there is no crystallinity there is no order 
okay and now tell me with this concept why a dislocation will a dislocation move through a grain boundary can it move through a grain boundary can it pass through a grain boundary why not Yeah, if the grain boundary, if movement of the grain boundary is possible, then not the along the grain boundary. Dislocation will obviously start <coughs> inside. The grain. Yes. And now it is moving towards grain boundary. Yes. Then there is more stress. So will dislocation pass through the grain boundary? Will it stop? Will it not feel the grain boundary at all? What will happen? Of course, there is some. I don't know actually the energy. Then how do you know? Of course. If it is of course or obvious, then you must be knowing something about it. No? Why dislocation cannot move or can move through a, through a grain boundary? No idea? So you see that edge dislocation needs a plane? After all, at the end of the day, it is the movement of atomic sites which needs a plane and all those things. Okay? So a dislocation is moving and here is a grain boundary. So a dislocation goes there and now it wants to move. In order to move it wants to have a plane. There is no plane. There is no boundary. So all those things are gone. It's like going out of the universe. That's an alien space for the dislocation concept to hold. So they don't hold there. What happens to a dislocation when it goes to surface? Done. Step formation, it's over. Dislocation is not there anymore. Right? So surface applies a force on a dislocation. When dislocations are very close to a surface, and I'm not calling, so surface can be anything. Grain boundary is also surface. Okay? So when dislocation is very close to a surface, surface has an attraction towards dislocation. Why? Because there is an energy gradient. Right? Whenever you have a happy state and a sad state, you have a compulsion to go towards a happy state. Right? A water has always a force. If you put it on elevation, it wants to go to whatever lower datum it has. Whether or not it goes, that depends on the path available. As soon as you provide a path, and that is possible for the thing to go through, it will go. Right? That part is understood. But force will always be there. Force is always this. Where U is energy, and X is the direction of the energy gradient. Right? So surface is applying a force on the dislocation as, as soon as dislocation comes in the field. Right? And it has been seen and calculated that that force which surface applies, there is a surface, there is a dislocation, so there is a force, and this force is exactly equal.